In this video, we're going to learn how to generate a buffer by uh, producing uh, the conjugate pair of either a weak acid or a weak base in situ by addition of either strong acid or strong base. Okay, remember how a buffer works. You need to have a weak acid and its conjugate uh, base at high concentrations and reasonably equal amounts. Uh, or if you want uh, a buffer with a base, you will need to have a weak base with its conjugate acid, and then they both would need to be at high concentrations and in uh, reasonably equal amounts. All right, so uh, writing that, and you need a weak acid and the conjugate base, or a weak base and the conjugate acid. All right, so uh, the question is how to generate these uh, buffer solutions if you only have either the weak acid or the weak base, so no conjugate pairs. Right, so well, uh, so again, the idea is you're going to have stock solutions of, of your weak acid that would be uh, acetic acid or hydrofluoric acid, and, and you might not have available uh, the conjugate base, or you might have available a stock solution of uh, your base like ammonia or methylamine, uh, but, but no conjugate acid. The question is how do you generate those conjugate pairs in situ? Right, so for an acid, this is uh, uh, straightforward. What you can actually do is add a little bit of strong base like sodium hydroxide. And what that is going to do is it's going to generate uh, the conjugate uh, base of that acid and then water. Right? So if you only have this to start with, uh, then if you add a little bit of base, what will happen is that some of the acid will turn into the conjugate base so that you can actually have uh, uh, reasonable amounts of both. Right? So the key here is going to be uh, to add the right amount of base so that you have a ratio of uh, weak acid to the conjugate base that gives you a target pH that you might be interested in. Okay? And for a base, what you would need to do is uh, the same but backwards. Right? Notice that you can generate the conjugate acid by adding a strong acid, for example, HCl. Right? If you add HCl, then what you will get here is the conjugate base, BH plus, plus Cl minus. And again, depending on, on how much of this and that the base, the weak base, and the conjugate acid you need for a particular target a pH, then you will need to add uh, a higher or lower amount of the strong acid. All right, so uh, that is the general idea. What we're going to do now is uh, run a numerical example to illustrate exactly how this works. And uh, we're actually going to be choosing uh, a, a base buffer, okay, so that uh, we're going to be following then this route. Okay, so here's what we want. We need a buffer at uh, pH 10. And uh, the only thing that we have at our disposal is uh, a base that is called methylamine, is this base, CH3 uh, NH2, which I'm simply going to call B. And the case of B of this uh, weak base uh, has a value of 4.4, 10 to the minus 4. Uh, the solution that we have, it, uh, so uh, the solution that we have uh, has a molarity of uh, 1.0 or more, and we need uh, 1.0 liters of the buffer. And again, the pH is equal to 10. Right, so the question is, well, how would we generate? Uh, how do we generate this buffer? Again, the key here is to recognize that uh, if we only take this solution of the base, there's no conjugate acid. So somehow we actually have to generate the conjugate acid. The way that we're going to do it is by running this reaction. We can go to the lab and try to get a little bit of, of uh, hydrochloric acid and then figure out how much of that hydrochloric acid we need to add to the base methylamine to generate an amount of uh, conjugate acid uh, uh, that is comparable uh, to the amount of base in such a way that gives us a pH then. Okay, so uh, let's see uh, how that works. Let me raise this and uh, start to think a little bit about the data here. Okay, notice that uh, uh, the way to do this is to actually, with the henderson hassel valve equation, that equation relates the pH to the pKa of a weak acid, and in the base version, uh, you have the pOH of a buffer solution related to the pKb. Okay, so uh, again, in base form, the henderson hassel valve equation looks like this. The pOH of the solution is equal to the pK sub B of the base with which you're making the buffer solution plus the base logarithm 
of the concentration of the weak acids of the conjugate acid over the concentration of the weak base. Okay, so this equation is going to dictate exactly what are the relative amounts of the conjugate acid and the weak base that we have, and that ultimately dictates how, what is the amount of hydrochloric acid that we need to add to the solution in order to be able to generate the right amount of conjugate acid from pure base. Okay. All right, so then let's uh, plug in the numbers here. Notice that the pK sub B comes from taking the uh, antibase and logarithm of that number, and that gives you a pK sub B value of 3.35. Okay. Uh, something that is tricky here is that in this HH equation, we actually need the POH, but the problem uh, is requesting a target pH. So we need to make the transformation between POH and pH, and remember that the sum of the pH and the POH have to be 14, has to be 14, right? So uh, if the pH is 10, that means that our target POH is 4.00, right? So this, that has to be equal to uh, the pK sub B, which is 3.35, plus the base and logarithm of the concentration of the conjugate acid over the concentration of the weak base. Well, great, so we can now operate to figure out exactly what is uh, the relationship between those two numbers. Okay, so uh, 0 0.65 will be equal to that logarithm, conjugate acid over weak base. Now we take the anti-logarithm, what we find is that the numbers here are going to be 4.47 is equal to the molar concentration of the conjugate acid over uh, the molar concentration of the weak base. Okay, so uh, to move a, little for, uh, move a little bit forward here, again, we have to remember that uh, what we uh, ultimately have to do is this. We're going to run this reaction where uh, we will be generating the pure base, okay, and add a given amount of hydrochloric acid, which we need to determine, to generate the right amount of the conjugate uh, acid so that uh, this ratio is satisfied. Notice that this reaction, uh, to figure out what uh, the right amount of hydrochloric acid here is, we're going to have to do stoichiometric calculations. And stoichiometric calculations work best when you uh, work in moles. Okay, so what we're going to do next is try to figure out here a way uh, to actually turn that into moles because that is far more useful. Okay, well, uh, that is straightforward. Well, remember that molar concentration is simply uh, the moles uh, of the substance that you're interested in over the volume of the solution. And because the conjugate acid and the weak base are going to be in the same solution, the volumes are exactly the same, right? So this ratio, uh, what this means ultimately, is that that is the same thing as the number of moles of the conjugate acid over the number of moles of the base. Okay? All right, so, so that is what we have. Great. Uh, again, the, and the, the problem that we have uh, to solve here is exactly what is uh, uh, this ratio what are those, those particular values. Okay, so um, here's what, how we're going to produce. How, how, this is how we're going to proceed. We need one liter of the buffer solution, and uh, uh, what we have is just uh, a solution of uh, methylamine that has a concentration of one molar. So then the idea is to take just one liter of that solution and then add a little bit, a little, a little bit of uh, a hydrochloric, hydrochloric acid in order to be able to generate uh, the conjugate uh, uh, acid right here, so that the ratio of the moles of the weak acid, of the conjugate acid and the weak base, uh, are in a, in a ratio of 4.47. Okay, so uh, again, we're going to work in moles, and the way to do this stoichiometric calculations is simply to uh, just figure out what you have before the reaction, and then after the reaction with hydrochloric acid. And again, we're going to be working in moles. Right, so if we take uh, one liter of the 1.0 molar solution of the base, then the total number of moles that we will have is exactly 1.0 mole. Uh, we have to this, to ha we have to add some acid, and we don't know exactly what that is, so we're going to call this X. And initially, I don't have any conjugate acid. That's exactly uh, my problem. I need to generate it in order to get a, a buffer. Okay? Right, so after the reaction takes place, then what will happen is that uh, because the stoichiometric coefficients are 1 of base and 1 of acid, then I will have 1.0 minus 6 moles left of the base, 
the hydrochloric acid will be completely consumed, but notice that uh, the amount of hydrochloric acid that has been consumed is exactly the amount of the, uh, conjugate acid that has been generated. Okay? So this is what happens after reaction, and that's what determines uh, my henderson hassel balch equation there. Okay? This will be the moles of BH that I have after reaction, and there is the moles of B that I have after reaction, and I can plug those right there in my henderson hassel balch equation. Right? So this is how I solve the problem. Okay, and X will be both the amount of conjugate acid that you have uh, in solution and the amount of hydrochloric acid that you need to add. All right, so uh, this problem then is just reduced to a simple algebraic expression uh, that you can solve to find that X is equal to 0 0.82, 0 0.82 mole. Okay, so what that means is that the number of moles that you have to add of uh, hydrochloric acid will be 0.82 moles. All right, so this is how you're going to do the, the buffer. You take one liter of a one molar solution of your methyl amine base. To that, you add 0.82 uh, moles of hydrochloric acid, and then the, uh, the resulting solution is going to have your conjugate pair, uh, your conjugate acid, and then your conjugate uh, your, your original weak base in a relationship so that the pOH that you get uh, uh, in that uh, buffer solution is 4, and therefore the pH is 10. Okay? Uh, something that is important as an approximation in this problem is that uh, uh, because we need one liter uh, of buffer solution and we're taking one liter of the original weak base solution, we're assuming that the addition of the 0 0.82 moles of hydrochloric acid doesn't change the volume at all. That is an approximation because hydrochloric acid uh, will, will add some volume, but for the uh, all purposes and intents of uh, this problem, we're neglecting that extra uh, volume addition by the hydrochloric acid. All right, so in this video we have learned how you can generate a conjugate pair in situ for a weak acid or a weak base so that you can generate a buffer solution with uh, a specified pH.